every praise. And they sung it just like they meant it too. Amen. Every praise is to our God. Man, it was so good. Even little baby over here was, 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 was getting with it. Amen. Amen. Out of the mouth of babes. Amen. We give honor to this awesome God that we give praise to. Amen. To the choir that has just sung so beautifully. Our deacon staff. All of my father's children, both here and on the web. We are so glad to be here. Amen. Still got my sweet tea with me. And three ice cubes. One want to preach like me. The other one want to break me. And one just won't say nothing because I won't cook. <laughs> amen. Amen. God is awesome. Happy Father's Day to all fathers. Amen. Yeah, we're so glad to see all of you here on this awesome day. Don't. You know, you took and stood in line for Mama. Don't take us to McDonald's. Amen. Burger King neither. Take us somewhere where we can stand in line. Amen. Amen. We're so happy. We're so honored to be here. We're still coming out of Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, starting at verse 13. Amen. We'll be coming from the King James Version of God's Holy Writing. If you have another translation, that's quite all right. We're going to wind up on the same road because it is still the Word of God. Usher, you may be seated. Y'all are looking so good on y'all post. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6, starting at verse 13. Amen. Have it. Say amen. amen. If not, say wait a minute. Amen. Glad to see Paul Paul and the family back in the house. Y'all was on vacation. Amen. amen. That's a good thing. Amen. We we missed you though. We glad to see you back. Amen. 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 Ephesians chapter six, starting at verse thirteen, and it reads like this: There, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye will be able to stand in the evil days and have done all to stand stand therefore having your loins girded about you with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all take the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all of the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. May God have a blessing to the reading of his awesome word. I talk with you briefly still in the same series we are in for a fight. And if I would use a, a subtopic, I would say, suit up. Suit up. Soldiers are trained to keep their equipment in battle-ready condition. Weapons are cleaned and oiled. Communication equipment is checked and double-checked. The helmet is kept in place in case of sudden attack. Now, if we are prepared, sparing so diligently for a human enemy, Paul says that we must also prepare for the battle against the spiritual enemy. Satan will attack at only the believers who are grounded in the truth recognize his lies. But in this passage, the armor of God isn't something that we are put on to fight on our own. But putting on the armor is equivalent to putting on Christ. Yes, the power of Christ is significant 
to stand against all evil and temptations that will that we will encounter. Paul wrote this letter from Rome where he was under the custody of Roman soldiers knowing that his readers uh, would be familiar with the dress and the armor of the Roman soldiers Paul used this imagery to communicate a spiritual message now in order to stand our ground in the heat of this battle we need every piece of armor now the order of the pieces listed is the order in which the soldier will put it on first fasten the sturdy belt of truth around your waist this belt was about six inches wide probably made of leather it held together the clothes underneath as well as the pieces of the armor in place such as the breastplate and the sheath of the sword. Yes, it uh, contained a, a breech cloak or breech cloth, uh, an apron that protected the lower abdomen. Yeah, it was braced. Uh, it was it was also braced the back in order to give strength. Mm -hmm. When the belt was fastened, the soldier was on duty, All right. uh, ready to fight. All right. A slack belt meant that he was off duty. All right. We must face every day with a fastened belt. All right. Yeah, ready to fight the battle when need be. Yes, yes, as the belt uh, was formed to be the foundation of the soldier's army. The truth is the foundation of Christian life. Yes, when the enemy attacks with his lies, with his half-truths, with the distortion of anything, yeah, we can stand firm in the truth. Yeah, 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 hold on because... The fact is, there are a lot of Christians right. that are out here today that's off duty. Right. Yeah, God is telling us to tighten up our belts. Right. Because we're in for a fight, we need to be on duty 24-7. Right. Next, the soldier must put on the body armor of God's righteousness. Right. Yes, the body armor was a large leather bronze or even chain mail mm -hmm. pieces that protected the body from the neck down to the thigh mm -hmm. yes yes protecting the vital organs mm -hmm. yes no soldier would go into battle without his body armor right. yeah often uh, this had a back piece too that protected the back from hits from behind All right. yeah righteous uh, righteousness provides a significant defense yeah it gives uh, 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 the evidence that we have been made right with God yes and that this righteousness ha has been given to us by the Holy Spirit yeah Satan seeks to hinder the righteous living Yes, when the enemy tries uh, uh, to convince us, to convince us that we aren't uh, really saved. Mm -hmm. Yes, that we just keep on disappointing God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that we are poor excuses for Christians. All right. We can stand up to him because of the righteousness that we have been promised through the faith of Jesus Christ. Next. A soldier wears a special sandal a military shoe that protects his feet without slowing him down yes 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 these soft leather shoes with studded soles allow them to march further move faster 
and give them the, the motivation and the movement in battle. Yeah, we also need some special shoes. The shoes of peace. Yes, that comes from the gospel. Yeah, we can stand firm with peace. Yes, even when we are in hand-to-hand -hand combat because we know that we are in or uh, doing what is right. Yeah, and we are on the winning side. We've got to have some peace because we run into too much trouble as it is. Yeah, and there are those who Satan wants to put in our path to cause some uproar in our life. And I'm so glad that God turns around and he's able to put us in his word. And his word shows up at the right time. Because we know that there are some devils. I told you just a couple of Sundays ago that it's not the person, but it's the puppeteer. Yes, yeah, Satan knows how to use people. I don't care how long you've been saved. I don't know how, how long you've been sanctified. I don't care how many scriptures you can quote. You can know the Bible backward, forward, and sideways. But if you drop your goal, right. he'll use you. Yes, yes. yes, and he'll use you to so that I told you he don't need, he don't need to do no eight-hour job. He just need a few seconds. And in those few seconds, he can cause some long-term effects. Yes, we need to be ready at any moment's notice so that we will be able to stand in the wild, against the wiles of the devil. Yeah, we can stand with peace in our heart because the fact is we know whose side we're on. Yes, if you know that God is your provider, don't you be agreeing with somebody that say, I don't know how to make it. That's right. say that, Pastor. Child, I can't make it. I know I can make it. I might go through it today, but today got to end. Yeah, I, I got some midnights in my life. Yeah, but let me know the sun is going to shine after a while. Yeah, my trouble might last a day, but weeping may endure for a night. But joy is coming in the morning. So I ain't going to agree with you. Because I'm on the winning side. I ain't, no, I ain't defeated. I'm a victor, not a victim. Amen. And when we are in the battle, both with the inner peace of Christ, that has already been given to us, yes, and the desire to produce the peace in the hearts of, of those who have not yet heard the gospel. Yeah, yeah, can you, uh, we can share this gospel of peace to those who haven't accepted or heard it yet. Yes, we strive in peace because we know that there's somebody out there that needs to hear the word of God. Yeah, and because they need to hear the word of God, it doesn't look good when a Christian is sitting there with a frown on his face. It doesn't look good when we're sitting there looking like we're sucking on lemons and got persimmons in our jaws. When we turn around and we make it seem like that we're having a bad day always, what would make you think that they want to be a Christian? While we're sitting there, with our arms folded, rolling our eyes, can't speak to one another. But then we going to heaven anyhow. <laughs> no, you're going to bust hell anyhow. Yeah, but heaven is prepared for prepared people. Yeah, some folk that want to follow God. No matter how bad our day is, God is still with us. No matter how bad it may get, it's going to get better after a while. Yeah, it's going to have our good days outweigh our bad days. And so that's why we got a smile on our face. That's why we're clapping. That's why we're coming here praising because he needs every one of our praise. He's our God. 
because he's in control, we are able to stand in the peace of God. This peace of God will surpass all understanding. The world doesn't understand when things seem to go awry in our life, but we're still smiling. They want to know what makes us tick. And I'll tell you what makes us tick. It's J-E-S-U-S. <laughs> Jesus will make you smile when the world is crying. Jesus will keep you in perfect peace when everybody else is going cuckoo. Yeah, while they were complaining, you can sit there and say, Thank you, Jesus. That is well with me as it is because it could be the other way. Hmm. So this gospel of peace causes others to want to know who you're serving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then next... Uh, as we look at this list of armor, we see that the soldier needs some extra protection. And so he picks up the shield. Yes, the Roman shield was a long, obli oblong, or oval piece. It was about four feet high and two feet wide. They were made of wood and leather with an iron frame. Sometimes the shield would be soaked in water to help extinguish the fiery arrows of the enemy. Yes, our shield of faith means total dependency on God. Yes, and the willingness to obey His will. Yes, 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 when we are tempted, when the arrows of doubt are shot, wrath, lust, and despair, vengeance, problems that seem like hit us on every side, and trials come in our lives, uh, we can hold up the shield and stop the arrows that are shot at us. Yeah, we can stand firm the ground that is beneath us and hold up our shields to protect us from hurt, harm, and danger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not only is the shield for us, but the shield is for our brothers and sisters. Yeah, the Roman soldiers uh, got a term that came from the Greeks were called the phalanx. Yeah, this, this shield would protect him and the person to the left. Yeah, it will protect others and, and it lets us know here today that when we pick up the shield of faith, right. yeah, it doesn't just cover us, but it covers you too. Right. Yeah, so all of you that think it's to, to your advantage to be about me, myself, and I, let me tell you that we have to look after our brothers and sisters because they might not be covered under the graces, and we are able to cover them under the faith. Yeah, 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 because faith gives us the strength to stand against Satan. Yes, yes, I tell you that we're no match for Satan, but through faith, we can speak some things into existence. Yeah, through faith, the power of life and death is in our tongue. Yeah, if you think that you ain't going to make it, guess what's going to happen? All right. You're not going to make it. Right. Yeah, but if you got the faith, the size of a mustard seed, right. yeah, you can speak to your mountain, and your mountain's got to get out of your way. Right. Reminds me of a story of an old lady that went to church, and she took it literally that God will move her mountain. And so she got home and she began to sing and began to praise God in the house and so her children came with her grandkids and they heard Grandmama singing in the kitchen, God's going to move that mountain. She had a mountain in front of her, in, in, in her, in, in front of her house just a couple of feet off that blocked the sunshine. 
And so she got to singing and saying that God is going to move that mountain. And the, the children looked at her and said, Mama, that ain't what the Bible meant. It means that if you got faith and there are those mountains in your life, that he will move those mountains. So they called the pastor, and the pastor came along, and he sat down with her, and he began to explain the same thing that the children uh, were saying. And so she got a little discouraged, but she kept on saying, but God's going to move that mountain. And so she would get up every day, and so the children had thought that because she was up in age, she had got cuckoo. She had got senile. She, she picked up Alzheimer's. And so they said, okay, they had made arrangements to move her to a home. And just a couple of minutes before the folk came to take her to the house, there was a big, strong man having a hard hat and, and having steel toe boots on. He walked up to her and knocked on the door, and the children asked him, he said, I need to see the owner of the house. And so they called Mama, and they said, Mama, she's a little senile, and she's losing her mind, but, but we are her caretakers, and all we want to know is what you're here for. He said, I really need to speak, not to you, but to the owner of the house. And so he went to Mama, and Mama was sitting there, and she said, he said, are you the owner of the house? And he said, yes, I am. She said, are you the owner of the land? He said, yes, I am. He said, the reason why I need your permission, I need you to sign this sheet right here that gives us permission because we are bringing a highway through here. We're going to move that mountain. And so mama began to shout. She said, I told you that God was going to move that mountain. And I'm telling you here today that if you got the faith, no matter whether it's physical or spiritual, if you got faith, God can move your mountain. Yes, the reason why some things ain't out of your life right now, because you trust in everybody else but God. I can't trust Oprah. Oprah got problems just like I do. Yeah, she got some good advice sometimes, but she can't tell me about marriage. How to make my marriage work, she ain't married. Matter of fact, if I could use one of them old words from back in the day, she's shacking. What that means, let me bring it up in the 21st century, living with each other. Amen. Bible said that's wrong. Amen. So just in case you're doing it right now, you need to go ahead and move on out. It got quiet in here then, bro. Ooh, got cold there for a second. Yeah. Man, when we trust in God, I don't need everybody's advice. Yeah, sometimes it's good to listen to some folks' advice, but sometimes if you can come from the Word, whoo, you can make some things happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so these guys had these shields so that they were able to depend on one another in this battle. Yeah, God's will, his way, will cause us to go further than we could ever imagine. Yeah, in today's life, we want to trust in everybody but God. We want to do it another way than what God says do it. But when we do it the way God wants it done, there are some things that will begin to happen in our life, and it will be for the better. Yes, when temptation, doubt, lust, and despair, all these things come, we can stand firm behind the shield of faith. Yeah, 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 not only that, the helmet that we put on protects the soldier's head. No sword can pierce a good helmet. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, any blow without the helmet on, any head blow is often spelled out in death. Yeah, without the hope of salvation, we'll be easily defeated by the enemy. Yeah, 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 but with the assurance of salvation's protection, 
Oh, it protects our mind heart that we'll be able to last long in the battle. Yeah, we can stand against Satan's attacks when we are attacked by empty and evil thoughts of doubt uh, of our salvation. We can trust in the protection of the helmet of salvation. Satan's greatest tool is to tell us that we have not been saved. Yeah, he wants to tell us that we haven't been sanctified by God. Yeah, and if we are not so in our faith, we allow that rascal to tell us that and we will believe him. Yeah, and let me tell you, his greatest tool is to use somebody that you trust. Somebody that you look up to. And they'll use the words that, hey, I thought you was a Christian. Hey, why are you doing that? You and you're not saved. But let me tell you something. Scripture says that a righteous man will fall seven times. But he just don't lay there. He gets back up again. Amen. God is able to reach way down and pick us up in our situation. We don't need to wallow in the mud. We don't need to spend our time, but we need to hook up with Jesus the Christ so he can pull us out of some situation. A lot of times we use that scripture for the fact is that we want to sin. (laughs) We want to do some stuff. Oh, we'll use that excuse that God can understand. But Satan is trying to take you out. He's trying to get you in a head blow. And if the head dies, the body follows. Yeah, if Satan can attack the head, how many folks you think it would disappoint? If the devil had his way to destroy Pastor Max Wayne, wonder how many people in here would fall by the wayside. Satan just doesn't want to kill me. He wants to destroy you. Amen. And so we have to keep the helmet of salvation on at all times to let us know that we can't go to the places we used to go. We can't hang around the folks sometimes that we used to hang around with. Yeah, I can't go into the club like I used to talking about I'm going to witness. Ah, <laughs> oh, there are some Christians that say use that lie to their benefit. I'm going into the club and witness. Let me tell you something. If you're going into the club and you're holding up the name of Jesus, let me tell you something. After a while, somebody's going to call security on me and they're going to escort me out the building. Oh, but if I go in there saying I'm going to witness and I stay in there till the club closes, Next week, I come back, and they welcome me in with open arms. Somebody has gone wrong. Yeah, there was a skirt tail that popped too long that might got your attention. Amen. It might be a, one of them hunky hunks up in there. They like to pull off his shirt every time he twirls. Oh, uh, don't y'all look at me like that. Y'all ain't been saved all y'all life. Amen. Matter of fact, some of y'all might have just came out the club. We got to put on the helmet of salvation so that we can realize whose we are. We belong to Jesus the Christ. He bought us with a price. And we just can't go anywhere and everywhere and call ourselves Christians. Oh, some of y'all laughing. Oh, I talked about the club, but what about that boat? Hmm. You done sat there and, Lord, I want you to bless me to get these sizzling seven. No mama need a pair of new shoes. I got a coach purse I got to (laughs) get. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, but God is not going to ordain you going into the devil's house. (laughs) Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, but, but, but pastor, I ain't going to gamble. I'm just going for the buffet. <laughs> you get full, you wind up over there by the slots going, Shh. But you better have your armor on because you'll wind up missing church. Going, Shh. Shh. Right. Amen. Amen. And if y'all go in there and win big, don't tell me where the money came from. Just bring it right here. We're going to bless it and go on about our business. Amen. Now, I didn't give y'all no okay cue to go down there. <laughs> Amen. Finally, the soldier takes up the sword of the spirit. This is the only offensive weapon that is mentioned. Yes, uh, this short sword is used for close combat. This sharp, short sword was one of Rome's greatest interventions, and it was used to win battles. Its double edge was made for the idea of cut and thrust strategies. But the Spirit uh, makes the Word of God effective when we speak and receive it. Yes, the Word, the Spirit of God is the Word of God that penetrate, that has penetrating power at a sharp age. Without the Holy Spirit within, we have no continual reminder that God's word is able to be stood upon. Yes, the word of God is used uh, against Satan in his temptation. Yeah, how do you know that this, this, this strategy of the sword of the spirit works, Reverend? Because Jesus used it against Satan in chapter 4 of Matthew. Yes, and because he used it, we are able to use it too. Right. Yeah, we have no, no, no power against Satan, but we can use the name of Jesus. Right. And at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess, and at the name of Jesus, demons even tremble. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to tell you here this morning that we're in for a fight. But it's time for us to suit up. Pray hard and long. And pray for our brothers and their sisters. Keep our eyes open. Because Satan is looking for those who are falling asleep. He's looking for those who are not at full attention. He's looking for those who are picking flowers by the side. He's looking for those who are in la-la land. Yeah, so that he can attack us and destroy us completely. Yes, Satan is going to and fro like a roaring lion, seeing who he can devour. But I want to let you know that if we got our sword at hand, we are able to fight him and win the battle. Yeah, keep on the whole armor of God. Don't let any of this armor go to waste. Because if we miss just one piece of this armor, then we won't have a successful, successful victory. Yes, we ought to be able to keep each other in prayer. Because it takes all of us to pray for one another. Yeah, I heard somebody say, I don't need nobody praying for me. But let me tell you, I need some folk that are interceding on your behalf. I ain't talking about them folk that, that are jealous hearted. Those folk that are envious of you. I'm talking I'm ain't talking about them folk that are praying for your downfall. But I'm talking about some folk that are standing with you. Stand by you. They're praying for you. They're praying that we go up the King's Highway together. That when we pray for one another, do you not know it strengthens you too? Yes, when we pray for one another, then blessings come 
our way. God is able to intervene. Didn't he say in scripture that whether there are two, if there are two or three assembled, touching and agreeing, he'll be in the midst? Yeah. So if we have two or three that's ready to fight this fight, if we have two or three that's willing to take some territory from this devil, if we have two or three that don't mind leaving these four walls to go out into the hedges and highways and win disciples for Christ. You know, we need to get about our Father's business so that nobody be left behind, that nobody will drop out of this fight. People will leave the church because they say it's too hard. To be a Christian. People in the church sometimes get the pharisaic attitude that they've been right all their life. And when a young Christian come in here, they want to beat them down with the word, beat them down with their dress, beat them down how they look, and let them know just a couple of days ago you just had a makeover. Matter of fact, we're still going through our spiritual makeover. And if we realize and look back and see where God has brought us from, we ought to have a little patience with the young Christian. Put them up under our arm and show them what God showed us. He said we we're going to be fishers of men. He never told us we were going to be the chef. He never told us that we we're going to be the grand cook. He didn't tell us to clean the fish and then cook it up. What he said is go out there and win men and women so bring them to God's house and God will prepare them. What it would look like to me. And I'm glad we on casual Sunday. That I come in here with my three-piece suit and try to tell you how to live. And you might not have nothing but blue jeans and a t-shirt. We have driven so many people away because we want to put a dress code on folk. Yeah, to come into the house of God. Let me tell you something. God didn't come for those who are well, but he came for those who need a position. He came for those who are sick. He came for those that are broken down, torn up, torn up on the floor, up, shattered, busted, broke, and disgusted. Truth be known, you still ain't got it together. God's still working on you. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie to you, he's still working on me. And after a while, when he get me fixed up like he want me to be fixed, he gonna carry me home. A lot of us too, so heaven bound, we ain't no earthly good. Every time we turn around, we got our nose up in the air looking down on folk and I hope and pray that when you got your nose up it don't rain because you're going to drown in it and then because you think you so perfect but then you ought to tell somebody that I wasn't born perfect but I serve a God that is perfect anybody in here today that remember the time when you didn't have it all together do you remember the time when folk would say you weren't going to amount to anything? When folk turned around and told you that you weren't going to be anything. But God said, I specialize in working on people that are said to be nothing. I'm one of them people. When they said that I wasn't going to amount to anything. When they said I wasn't going to be no good. Look at God now. I give him the praise. I give him the honor because he worked on me. And if I know he'll work on me, I know he'll work on you. You ain't too bad. You are just right for what God is looking for. As the cross thing, maybe I'm talking to you this morning. Maybe that you are that person 
that seems like can't get it right. Maybe you're that person that's been shattered, broken, busted, and disgusted. Let me tell you something. God is standing with outstretched arms saying, whosoever will, let them come. Yeah, you ain't got to have no money. You ain't got to have no price. I ain't going to even put a price tag on it. But God gave it away free. And today, you can be with him. It's easy as ABC. Acknowledge that you are a sinner. Believe in your heart that he died for you. And confess with your mouth. And the Bible said, Thou shalt be saved. You ain't got to cut no cartwheels. You ain't got to kick over no benches. But all you can do is just say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I need you and I can't live without you. And I guarantee you, salvation will be with you. Why don't you stay here?